Let's take a car speeding up in the positive direction. The F of the engine is bigger than F friction so it accelerates. When the passenger doesn't have a seat belt, the car and the passenger are in two different systems. F net X is equal to FA minus FF. When the passenger does have a seat belt, he and the car are in the same system. During a collision, when the passenger doesn't have a seat belt, he is not exposed to the same forces the car is exposed to because the car and passenger are in two different systems. The opposite force acting on the car during the collision makes it stop because of the law of inertia. The person is not affected by the force of the new object and keeps speeding up as though there were no collision. During a collision, when the passenger does have a seat belt, the forces acting on the car will affect him as well. Let's take a closer look at the passenger during a collision when he does have a seat belt. The seat belt applies an additional force. The force of the seat belt balances out the F net and so the passenger stops. The seat belt is designed to lock and supply a force aiming to slow down the passenger and reduce his risk of injury when the car slows down quickly. That's why seat belts lock during a collision. Diagram time. Driver A doesn't have a seat belt. Driver B does. The maximum acceleration of driver A is higher than driver B. And that is how seat belts are physically possible.